Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see your smiling faces. I know you have smiling faces behind those masks. <laughs> Although you could be sticking your tongue out, I would never know. <laughs> so just draw a smiling face, and that way, you know, we can get to go. I know it's almost an act of Congress to get in here. I understand that. Um, but I don't know about you, but this past week I saw an interview with the church. I think it was in California, I'm not certain, but um, the, the interviewer, the reporter said churches, not this church, but churches, she lumped everybody together, churches are not, they're spreading the virus and they're not listening. And the camera crew was there and the church was worshiping as normal and no social distance. And the pastor, whatever he was preaching on, they took a little clip out of the sermon where he said, it's a God-given right. So they placed it in there so it's churches are not listening and the pastor said it's a God-given right to worship and do what we want to do, which you know how that goes. It's taken out of context. However, the reason we do what we do is so we're not lumped in that number we're trying to be safe as we can and uh, be respectful of one another while at the same time acknowledging that we serve a mighty God. Our lives are in His hands, it doesn't matter, okay? Our lives are always in His hands, whether there's a coronavirus or not. However, we just want to be respectful of one another and, and not to be labeled as careless and disrespectful. So anyway, thank you for going through the rigors of getting in the door. So, <laughs> appreciate you being here. Anybody here for the first time? You're, you're only been... Lee, some of you are telling stories. I think a couple are telling the truth back there. Because, see, people who have been here know what I'm about to say. We get cups, free cups, as they own the Baptist church, and that's what they want. <laughs> we do have two legitimate first-time visitors. Where's our deacons? Uh, Somebody go back. Thank you, Patricia's got it. She's going to give y'all some cups. The rest of y'all, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Would you stand with me? Let's stand together and worship the Lord. Let me go with you in prayer, and then we're going to sing, okay? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we're gathered here today in this building because uh, it is a privilege, and you have given us this opportunity to come together. Help us to uh, open our hearts and minds to hear, to worship, to to learn and to grow and to be mature in our, in our faith, Lord. I pray that you would equip us for this walk and this journey, and I pray that we would be obedient to what we learn. Uh, thank you for being able to have fellowship with one another, even though it may be at a little distance. Um, at least we get to see one another and speak, and, and thank you, Lord, for giving us that, and I pray that we would continue to, to, to seek after you each day as we, we try to figure out how to walk in this life, in this the way it is now, Lord, and I, I know that the answer is still the same place it always is, and that's in you, as we find it in your holy word, and seek after you and the Holy Spirit leading us. So thank you, Lord, for who you are. And we just want to praise you, Lord, this morning as we sing these songs together. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing. Let's sing. Blessed be your name.
to a lot of us. A shelter in the time of storm. It's a familiar hymn that's been around for a long time. But think about the words as we sing. Shelter in the time of storm. Daddy is holding his own. Nothing has really changed. It was so good to be with him. 
Uh, did tell them that you were checking on them every day. She always good. Uh, she's uh, staying here with us this weekend. Thanks for all your prayers and keeping everyone updated. So continue to pray for Don Tyler and his family still at MUSC. They're still trying to get the inflammation taken care of around his pancreas and um, so he can have the surgeries needed. And, but Linda is able to be with him or other family members as they uh, kind of swapped off a couple times now. So pray for them. And, Sue's here, Miss Hazel's back there, and their family members as well. Other family members pray for them. Um, as Don is uh, is in need of prayer, and, uh, and others as well. We uh, we have quite a lot on our prayer list, and I did want to add a couple to that in your bulletin. You'll see the prayer list uh, posted there. Appreciate Sandy doing that. Um, Nelson Chapman is the other. Um, Nelson is home. Uh, came home yesterday. He's doing much better. Uh, he came home with um, some medication to help with seizures. And so um, they still don't know exactly what caused those seizures. And thank the Lord, he was driving when the, latter one, the last one happened, but Miss Wileen and, and uh, her granddaughter were with him. Um, but uh, he just went into the ditch. It didn't hurt anybody. It wasn't a major accident. And uh, so he is home. But continue to pray for Nelson. And family. Also, if you will add Taft and Alba Skipper, Taft and Alba Skipper, as Miss Grace called yesterday and wanted to add them to our prayer list. Um, and you can read over the prayer list if there are others that need to be added. Please write them on your bulletin or a note and stick it in my box or, or Sandy's box over there. Let us know so we can add those to the prayer list. Generally, the names will stay on the prayer list about two weeks and then they drop off unless we know something different so tell us uh, about that we need to add also make sure you pick up a calendar back there for august uh there were a couple birthdays past candy beavers was his birth on the first miss eunice's was the fourth um avery combs was this past thursday and hayden witt was uh, friday i've uh, got another birthday alex is on monday and Ms. diane martin is on monday and then miss rebecca miss rebecca hey Happy birthday. Um, it's coming up and then others the next week. I do need to make an announcement about the uh, calendar. On the 27th, there is listed a Shepherd's Table fundraiser. Uh, we got the information, we got the emails, and everything was on go. We printed it, and I went to my office and saw an email where it had been canceled. So, so that's no longer a, a matter of concern there. But continue to pray for the Shepherd's Table as they are still giving meals out, but they're doing it out the door. They're not uh, uh, letting anyone come inside and sit down, and that's what we participate in once a month. So as of right now, they still need our help in what they're doing, but they need prayer. So continue to pray for them with that. And also, I'd be in trouble if I didn't mention this, in your bulletin there's an announcement about a drive-in baby shower uh, this afternoon from five to six for Braden Wayne Anderson. And the instructions are there on the bottom, which means you come in that, it's actually the exit, but it's the entrance closest to Conway. Come in, drive all the way around the building over to the carport, and you'll see the table set up there and so forth. So that's the day from five to six. So remember that. I did the whole day yesterday, and it's the first time I've held him and he didn't go to sleep. He was wiped out yesterday, so I did get to hold him a little bit. Um, other announcements, remember that uh, September is our 75th anniversary. Homewood Baptist Church has been in existence for 75 years. The Lord has done a lot in the 75 years. A lot of you are, um, can attest to at least the years that you've been here, the things that have gone on here, as well as the, the old building across the street that used to be there, and that was the building. That was the Homewood Baptist Church building for, for so long. But on the 20th, it's our normal homecoming. On the 20th of September, we have an IMB uh, International Mission Board missionary who will be here on the 20th to share about what the Lord's doing in her life and to kind of spur us on as we are missionaries wherever we are. Also to speak specifically to our children that day um, about praying about God using them as missionaries as well. So her name is Becca. That's the only name I could give you. And I, I do want to remind you, and I, and I hate it's this way, but the, on that day, we won't, will not be able to do Facebook. 
or the homes or anything outside these walls uh, to protect her because where she serves is a closed situation. So she's there, but uh, as a missionary uh, serving the Lord, but it can't be publicized. So for her protection, uh, if you're in, this, in the walls inside the building on the 20th, you'll get to hear some great things. If you're outside, you'll be excluded that Sunday, which I hate. It's just how things are. Also, we're trying to have a, a church conference. Uh, we mentioned it Wednesday night, which gives us 30 days to, to that meeting, which will be on the 9th. I think it's the 9th of September, four weeks from this past Wednesday, church conference. So keep that in mind. Okay? We good? You all understand all that? Question. Yes, ma'am? With the homecoming, we're not going to do the meal like we normally do. No, we're not going to do the meal. I'm not sure exactly how, how much we can do right now, but we're not going to do the meal. Okay, homecoming's going to be different this year. But for the whole month of September, we're going to look back. And again, I remind you, if you have some testimonies, some things that you remember from Homewood growing up or in the past Please give it to me, uh, text it to me, uh, write it down, put it in the box, call me, whatever. Leave a voicemail on the, the church phone um, so we can do that. But the whole month of September will be a celebration of what God has done at Homewood Baptist Church in the last 75 years. Okay, And it will also be a uh, time when we're encouraged and admonished to go further, to go further in a different way. You're going to hear that in just a moment as well. It's a reminder of why church exists, okay? And it's not to sit inside the walls. So even though we're thankful for that today. All right. I want to share something with you just as a matter of a devotional. And also, uh, before I do that, I was reminded because the papers are curled up, um, the building's being sprayed. <laughs> and that's what happens. Um, twice a week, the whole building is sprayed. Uh, if you didn't hear that or get that memo earlier, is sprayed by the same solution they're using in the hospital to sanitize. Uh, tomorrow it'll be sprayed before Wednesday. Uh, after Wednesday it's sprayed before Sunday. The whole building and it's used. The fogger is used, and I appreciate property maintenance doing that. And, and, and uh, Rosemary and Keith, her husband, that, that clean and take care of that. So just for your safety, twice a week it's it's sanitized. Also. Um, if you came in and smelled glue, you wonder what that was? Did you smell the glue? Okay. Um, property and maintenance team uh, has been working on getting the, some things done that um, just like this. this. This was a major deal. We had bubbles in the carpet all over the building and they took care of that. Team came in here and they pulled the carpet back in this whole room both hallways, Sunday school classes, they worked hard for two solid days. And that's why you smell the glue. They re-glued the whole, the whole place, basically, to get those bubbles out. So we're thankful for that. That's where the, the smell of glue is coming from. So appreciate the dean and the team getting that taken care of. So just want you to know that it's glue. Okay, that's what you smell. So uh, thank them for taking care of that. I want to read this to you. In a matter of encouragement, a police sergeant once asked me the secret of victorious Christian living. This is Billy Graham speaking, by the way. The secret of victorious Christian living. And I told him there is no magic formula. But if any one word could describe it, it would be surrender. But if, and he said, you may ask, how can I surrender my life? How can I surrender my life? There needs to be confession of sin a complete yielding of every area of our lives, personalities, and wills to Jesus Christ, plus faith that Christ will accept that commitment. Jesus says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Daily surrender. That's the key to daily victory. A word from Billy Graham. It's a good word. All right. We're going to sing after we have prayer for our community and country. And um, is there someone here today that would come up and pray for our community, just a community? Thank you. Rebecca's going to come pray for our community. Thank you. Would somebody come after and pray for our nation? Thank you. Ms. Margie, come on. All right. Ms. Rebecca, play, pray for our community, and Ms. Margie's going to pray for our community. Or, Ms. Dear Lord, over the next couple of
couple of weeks as we start school, Lord, we ask you that you would help each parent and each child in the community, Lord, as things will ever change with this virus. Lord, we ask you that you'll protect our children and send them out, and that you'll help the parents that are homeschooling, Lord. We ask you to be with each and every one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We are so happy that we do have a Lord that we can go to, guys. When we see things going on in our country and around the world that is not pleasing to us and it's, it's quite fearful, we always know that we have a Father that is looking over us. So, Father, we just love you and we praise you and we bless you and we just honor you, Father God. We thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you that you are the all-powerful God, the almighty God. The El Shaddai, Father God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And Father God, that you are, you are our Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Father. We thank you that you are the great I am, Father God, and that nothing, nothing, Father, is more powerful than you are. And we thank you, Lord, that you're watching over our land as we're calling out to you, Father, asking you to heal our land. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just put a hedge of protection about our country. We put a hedge of protection about our land, Father God, and we plead the blood of Jesus over us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just ask you to put a hedge of protection about our president and our, our vice president and their families, Father God. We ask you to send the angels, Father, to watch guard over them, Father, and to protect them. And Father, we pray that nothing, nothing, nothing can come near them, Father, that would do them harm. Their harm. Father, we pray that people would rise up and begin to understand that we're in a world right now that we need to be calling out to you because you are the all-powerful God. You are our El Shaddai, Father God. You are our Lord God Almighty. And Father, you are the great I am. And, and right now, Father, we re release this into your hands. We release our land into your hands. And Father, we ask you, we ask you, Father God, as your children, to hear our plea, to hear our cry, as we humble ourselves before you, Father, and we ask you to heal our land. And Father, because your word is true, we thank you for healing our land. In Jesus' name, amen. This was found outside. Uh-oh, I hit the camera. It's taking my picture. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I took a picture. <laughs> this is somebody's phone that now has a weird picture on it. So, <laughs> anybody missing the phone? This was found outside in the parking lot. It's, it's a new, fairly new phone. A brand new phone. It looks new. I'll sell it to you cheap. <laughs> somebody's missing the phone. Don't need to check. Okay. It's up here. I, I'm not sure. And it's taking pictures. Okay, Sue has it. Um, okay. All right, if y'all missed it one. I have it on the side. Okay. All right. So if you missed the phone, there it is. Okay. Again, thank y'all for being here today. And um, we're going to sing a song. And the song is A Thousand Tongues. It's the name of it. Think about the words of the songs as we sing the message in the words. Let's stand for them.
We're going to do something a little different this morning. Um, it is in the bulletin, I think. Um, it's time for the sermon, which we're going to get to. Uh, we're going to Acts chapter 17. But something very special happened yesterday, and Jr. is going to come up and tell you about what happened yesterday. And I want you, as he's talking, to understand. We talk a lot about what it means to be a disciple of the Lord, what that life looks like. This is what that life is supposed to be about, okay? Not that JR is perfect, you're not perfect. I asked that as a dumbass kid. <laughs> but this is what we're supposed to be about doing on a daily basis. JR, come on up if you would, share with us. Can we take that off the stand? Yes. Standing still is not my normal thing. You're right here. pretty much affected everybody in this room. Yes. Raise your hand if you know somebody that has coronavirus. That stuff's spreading rapidly around this world, isn't it? Yes. Think about us as Christians. If we were as effective as the coronavirus and about spreading the gospel, how much better off we'd be right now. Um, last night, it was, a, it was a weird day. Um, and I apologize, I'm not the most dynamic speaker for most uh, you know, intellectual when it comes to speaking. However, um, the other day, about two days ago, I almost walked off the job. It was a bad day. Obviously, I'm a shorter dude working security, which is kind of odd anyway. Um, we had an incident. I almost walked off the job because we were just doing it, and nobody likes security in the first place. Uh, you know, so we ended up just telling people about wristbands, wear them in the pool, and like, you know, very explicit language, like you're a racist, so, you know, all that good, you know, stuff. And we're like, okay, whatever, here we go. So I was like, oh boy, and I'm. I was about, you know, going home by about midnight that day. Um, I was like, God, I don't know if you want me in this job, but uh, it was kind of like, go back. So I went back yesterday, and uh, so everything was working out good. I was riding a little bike around the area of patrol uh, at the pools. And um, so there was this family that I was talking to, and I was witnessing to them. We were talking about um, pretty much the situation that happened the night before about the racial tension. And then so I immediately, as a white guy, you know, start talking about racism, and which is a lot of people today, they don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. We know racism exists. However, with this whole Black Lives Matter movement, I've you know, stated my fact that I believe it's more of a demonic sort of division amongst the nation. And uh, just stated my beliefs, and it was funny because they almost believe the exact same thing I do because the book was like, um, why would Black Lives Matter team up with the LGBT community. And it's just, if you think about it, it's just one big division. And so I started, you know, doing, I had done so much research on this movement that's going on. And um, so Black Lives Matter was actually come up, uh, it was formed from three lesbian women. I don't know if a lot of people know that. And um, so everything starts to kind of line up. And then we start talking scripture. And then I started witnessing to the woman. And um, her husband was like, yeah, she needs the Lord. And I was like, well, I was like, let's, you know, pray a prayer. And, uh, you know, I was like, hey, I was like, here's a pool right here. I was like, I can baptize you right now. And she was like, you know what? She was like, that sounds great. Um, however, I'm drinking at the moment. And I was like, okay. And then she's like, I want to wait till I get back to North Carolina, and I'm going to do it in my church. I was like, all right, cool. So I was like, all right, you know, kind of had my strut going on back to the, uh, the guard shack. I was like, I did what I was supposed to. However, this is where the story just begins. Um, I went back to the guard shack. And it was just the weirdest thing. Um, I looked over there, and there was a Bible, an old you know, King James Version Bible, and it's not mine. It's the, the guard shacks. Uh, they have like a little library in there. So I picked it up, and then I was like, the Lord was like, go stand outside. I was like, all right. No, nah, I kid you not. Uh, no embellishment. It was like maybe 45 seconds later, you know, this guy comes walking along, holding the Bible, and he like looks at me. I was like, you vacationing? He was like, yeah. I was like, where are you coming from? Just by chance, like California. And I was like, okay. I was like, you escaping from the, uh, the chaos over there? And uh, he was like, yeah. He was like, I'm kind of like leaving my job just to come on vacation. I need to get out for a while. Um, so me and him started talking, and he was talking about all the stuff he had done, you know, all the clubs he had been to, and, you know, you know the party lifestyle at first. Um, 
And then he was talking about him and his girlfriend were kind of at wit's end. His friends and him kind of had fallen out. He just needed to vent. So I'm like, you know, I'm on a job. I have nothing else to do. Like, you know, let's talk. And he starts venting and venting to me. And then, uh, so I'm just like waiting. Now, because I'm holding the Bible for a reason. And I kind of like keep flashing it. See if he's like looking at it. And I just like kind of make a little something. And I can see him just kind of like eyeing over and eyeing. Because he knows it's about to happen. He knows it's coming. And uh, so... Ironically enough, you know, I was like, when is the perfect time to just bust in there and you know, talk about the Lord? And it happened. He was talking about one of the uh, situations he had just happened with him and his girlfriend going on the slingshot. Y'all know what that is at the beach, like when they pull this huge thing down and you sit in it, just blast off and you do like flips and flips and flips all over the place, right? And he was like, man, I feel like I died on that thing. And he was, I was like, really? And I was like, well, we are going to die one day. And I was like, dude, this might be a dark, you know, kind of segue into talking about Christ right here, but, you know, here we go. You know, um, so then I was like, has anybody ever talked to you about the Lord? And he's like, I went to church a couple times, and we started talking about, like I said, and he's a black guy, you know, he'd been in uh, gangs, he'd been in prison, and things like that, so immediately, I don't know why I'm trying to bust down this racial tension right off the bat and tell him exactly where I stand with, you know, the BLM movement, LGBT, and, you know, come to find out. A lot of people have the same exact um, outlooks because nothing really adds up in this you know, nowadays agenda, which I feel personally is a demonic agenda. Um, so he starts asking me questions and questions and questions about the Bible. And I tell him, like, listen, I'm going to give you the God's honest truth. I am not going to give you a politically correct answer. I was like, I'm not one that's going to you know, run away from talking about homosexuals. I'm not going to talk about race, you know, once in a shy away from talking about racial division and things like that. And it's like, if you go to a church that is scared to preach the entire word of God, you need to get out of there and run fast. And, and so he was telling me a lot of the churches that he went to in California are very scared. And however, most of the people that uh, attend his church that he would go to would be drunk, high, just sitting in there, dressed to the nines, you know, talking about the new clothes that they would buy. And I remember somebody in here talking about it last week when the scripture came to mind. It was like, hey, well, I was like, well, in the Bible, it does say, you know, what is it a man to gain the world when he loses his soul? And I'm talking, I've never been so articulate just firing off scripture in my life, you know. But, but I give, you know, the Holy Spirit complete credit for it. Like I said, I am not, everybody knows me, knows I'm not that articulate of a person. And, um, you know, we had talked about the Lord for almost two and a half hours. I sat down with him at 7 o'clock in the evening. Here it is, 9.30. My supervisor was just like walking. I can tell he's getting frustrated because I'm not doing my job. And I first admit I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and then this is kind of weird because like Satan tries to throw a wrench in things. Especially whenever he knows that there's a spiritual battle going on. He's going to try to block every ounce of it. So, and this is very strange. Like this kid is just receiving the word of God through me. And uh, the supervisor pulls out a phone and it's uh, a a prostitute. He was like, would you pay to do, you know, what with her? And I'm like, oh, great. This is awkward. We didn't even respond to him. He just kind of walked away. And so I quit beating around the bush. And I was like, um, do you want to give your life to the Lord? And he was like, yeah, how do I do it? So I know everybody can do it different ways. You know, that's between him and really the Holy Spirit. And so I deal with the eight, what was called the ABCs of Christ. Well, ABCs of salvation. I'm sure some of you are uh, you know what the ABCs of salvation were. So I walked him through those steps. And uh, here it is. I, I'm off the clock now. It's 10. We left for 10 o'clock. I pretty much got paid for three hours of doing, witnessing pretty much towards the end of my shift. And um, so I was like, hey, I was like, again, I was like, you want to go get baptized real quick? I was like, there's a pool there. I'm a, I'm a security guard in charge of the pool. I was like, I'm the guy you got to get in. And uh, so, anyways. Um, he was like, yeah, let me run back to my room and get a change of clothes. And he was like, what about you? I was like, I ain't worried about it, you know. And so he ran, and I called Steve, and I was like, hey. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, am I supposed to say something? Right now? And so Steve was like, you know, I don't even know what was going through your, you know, your head last night. But I'm like, you know what, this is what the Holy Spirit's telling me to do. I cannot ignore this. It's like, this is just too much of a, a coincidence, but I don't believe in coincidences. Guy from California, right? Yeah. Uh, so he comes back. He's like, you know, got his like ball shorts on, his shirt, and uh, we get into the, uh, the pool. And we uh, read um, John. Uh, read a couple of scriptures to John, talking about you know, being baptized and things and such. 
Um, and I told him some volume of baptism, and it, you know, dumped him. Yeah. And then he comes up, he's like, man, I feel clean! <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, man. Well, there was two ladies in the corner of the pool, and they were kind of like scoffing. You know, I was like, like, and that was a good teaching moment for me to him. I was like, this is not going to be an easy walk. I was like, just because you're a Christian, like, your life is not going to become easy. I was like, if you hear the prosperity of God's that God wants to prosper you financially, I was like, that is, that is a lie from the pits of hell. I was like, Jesus even said, the world's going to hate you, because they hated me first. I was like, the service's not better than the master. We are going to have adversity, but we have hope in the Lord. And like, we had just, you know, talked even more scripture throughout the night. And um, I was like, but those women over there, I was like, they're fulfilling the Bible prophecy. I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, because in the end time, scoffers will come. You know, and it like it really hit me right there. And then we started, he was, he was really wanting to know more about, we started getting into um, like end times prophecy, and rapture type stuff. And uh, it was one thing I kind of, you know, was on my mind too. And I told him that, you know, when it comes to like buying and selling and trading, I was like, look how close we are to being conditioned for this already with us wearing this mask. Which I'm not anti mask because I know it's not the mark of the beast. However, I was like, when was the last time you were going to a store without a mask? You know, without, you know, buying, you know, to me it's sort of like a conditioning type, you know, I explained it to him thoroughly. And, um, you know, like I said, it, it was a great night, and then uh, the way it ended was kind of humorous. Because um, he was like, hey, can you drive me to the store? He said, I need to buy a pack of new clothes. I was like, yeah, sure, let's get in the truck. So we go down to a circle, okay, and uh, we get him a pack of new pork cigarettes. And he was like, hey, do you think it's a sin if I smoke and read the Bible? And this is literally how the night ended. I was like, no, but I guarantee you're going to be producing a lot quicker than I am. But that's pretty much how it went down. Whatsoever, just to come in here and learn more and get more information if we're not putting it in practice. Um, JR told you that there were times he didn't know what to say, he didn't know how this was going to work out. Um, there was opposition, there were things said to him that uh, was, was very um, tough for him to take about the groups around, but he knew he just was looking for an opportunity to share Christ. That's the key, folks. Are we looking for that opportunity to share Christ? God will use us when we are available to be used. When we're looking for the opportunity, God will present it to us. And as J.R. already said, it's not about, I, know, I have to know this book backwards and forwards before I can share Christ. It's God's going to give you the words. Yes, we need to be in His Word. However, just like J.R. said, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the words that you need at the time. Thank you. And, and folks, there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm not sure where I can find that, but let's find it together. Let's, let's look it up. I know it's in here. We'll figure it out together. There's nothing wrong with being genuine. As a matter of fact, that's what we're supposed to be, genuine. With I don't know exactly where it is, but we'll find it. Okay? If we're waiting to where we can quote the whole scripture forwards and backwards, before we witness to the first person, we're wasting our time and wasting God's, the life that he's given us. So I appreciate J.R. being willing to share that. And I don't know if you've been in that environment lately down at the beach. If you've been in the environment that he just described to you where you just walk in an area and you're automatically just cussed out and, you know. And then you put a Bible in your hand. And you talk about the looks and the comments and so forth. And that's actually what the scripture is on today. And, and I'm just going to share it with you briefly um, in, in Acts. Is that there's going to be opposition to the church. There has been opposition to the church since it was formed. Amen. There's always going to be opposition to the church. The church has to still function as the church. And do what God has commanded us to do. So. Appreciate you all sharing that with us this morning. And um, we need to pray for the fellow. Uh, what's his name? 
RJ. Oh, that's right. It's RJ, not JR, but RJ is the guy's name. That was another thing that was humorous about that. Pray for him um, and him being discipled. It's not just about starting the journey, but it's about being discipled and being developed and sanctified in God's Word as he, as he uh, continues to travel in that. Um, I want you to go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, and I'm, I'm just going to introduce this and let you know where we're headed next. Um, today's title is Agitating and Stirring Up the Crowds. Just so you know, that's not the church's mandate. That's what happens to the church. Okay, and that's what happened in Acts against the church. So I want to read this passage to you, uh, Acts 17, uh, verses 1 through 15, and understand at this point, uh, Wednesday nights, by the way, if you're not joining us for Wednesday nights, we just started in the book of James two weeks ago. We introduced it, and this past Wednesday, we got into the first few verses. Uh, the half-brother of Jesus, James, that James. And um, we're, we're talking about what happened with the church. Um, he was there, and he witnessed the things going on with Stephen. In the 8th chapter of Acts, you'll see, the 7th chapter of Acts, you'll see Stephen as one of the, the first guys that were called to deacon, to serve the church. He was also the first martyr for his faith. And you also see the description of Stephen and his preaching uh, right before he was stoned. As he was being stoned, Saul, who later is Paul, was standing there witnessing it, cheering them on, and he began to persecute the church. And uh, they were scattered. The, the Jews were scattered at that point. So you see the rest of Acts as they're sending people out to get in touch with those churches that have been formed or are being formed and to get in touch with the Jews to say, hey, we need to, we need to come together as believers in Christ. And this is where Judaism and Christianity um, divide. This is where there becomes a difference between Judaism and Christianity. Christians are first called Christians at Antioch, which is just a couple chapters back, actually, from this. So Paul is in Thessalonica, and he's been sent out. This is his second missionary journey. He's been sent out by the church, by the uh, moving of the Holy Spirit to the church to send Barnabas out and, and, and Paul, and, and they're preaching the gospel. This is to the churches. So he's at Thessalonica, chapter 17, verse 1. Now when they had traveled through um, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where they, uh, there was a synagogue of the Jews, and that was his normal thing. And according to Paul's custom, he went to them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures and explaining and giving evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. Note his message. Christ had to suffer rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ, the Messiah that you've been looking for, okay? And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and a number of the leading women. So some of the Jews, a great, number, a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and a number of the leading women, but the Jews becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, formed a mob, and set the city in an uproar. Does that sound familiar? Okay. And coming upon the house of Jason, they were seeking to bring them out to the people. Jason is a, is a friend of Paul. Some theologians believe he's a kinsperson of Paul, a cousin of some, of some sort. And when they did not find them, they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have upset the world have come here also. And Jason has welcomed them, and they all act contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, there's another king, Jesus. Note again the message. They've been saying, there's another king, Jesus. Verse 8. And they stirred up the crowd and the city authorities. Again, the Jews are the ones stirring up the crowd. Uh, and, they, and the authorities who heard these things. Verse 9. And when they had received a pledge from Jason, and that pledge is, an, is a, a bond. He had to pay. Get out of jail. Pledged from Jason and the others, they released them. Verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. So they're in a different town, uh, Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Again, that was their custom. Now these were more noble-minded than those of Thessalonica. But they received the word with great eagerness. And, and notice what they do. 
They were examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were, were so. In other words, I hear what you say, but I'm going to examine it myself to make sure it's the truth. Okay? It's a great practice. Verse 12, many of them, many of the Jews, therefore, believed, along with a number of prominent Greek women and men, those are Gentiles, but when the Jews of Thessalonica found out that the word of God had been proclaimed by Paul and Maria also, they came there likewise. Okay? They were ticked off. These are the Jews. Okay? Uh, these are the Jewish leaders, not just the Jews. These were leaders in the Jewish uh, belief, the Jewish sect that, uh, that didn't like at all what Paul was teaching, Paul and Silas. Agitating, this is what they did. They came to Maria also. They came there likewise agitating and stirring up the crowds, which is our title. Verse 14, And then immediately the brethren sent Paul out to go as far as the sea, and Silas and Timothy remained there. Uh, now those who conducted Paul uh, brought him as far as Athens, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. Um, the reason some of them stayed is they were Gentiles, or like Timothy, uh, they were uh, partially Jew, partially Gentile, they weren't as much in, as a threat as Paul was. Um, I want you to see what's happening here. There's a lot of opposition to the gospel. A lot of opposition. From whom? The leaders of the Jewish people that thought Paul was preaching something that was, was totally against what they were used to. Okay? And, I, and I've, I've heard this many times and I understand it to be the truth. If you and I can live a Christian life and not be opposed by the society we live in, some degree or other, there's a problem. We are not preaching the gospel, the true gospel, or we're not preaching at all. When I say preaching, I mean the way we live our lives as well as our testimony given, as J.R. said a while ago. The gospel that you and I are commissioned and commanded to, to preach to this lost world is becoming more and more and more offensive to our society. And folks, you and I cannot blend into this messed up lost world. If you and I are smooth sailing through this life, there's a problem. Jesus couldn't smooth sail through this life. His followers couldn't come close to smooth sailing through this life. And you and I certainly cannot. Amen. One of the things that J.R. shared with me last night and I shared with you just a moment ago is he hit the issues head on. He found hostility because of the color of his skin at the people, the people that were there. But he hit it head on as a believer in Christ, not as a political stance, not as here, here's what my family says, but here's what Christ says. This is, this is, and he said this is a demonic thing. There's, there's a basis there, a foundational thing that I'm coming from a biblical worldview. So I see everything from a biblical worldview. It has spiritual value one way or the other. Everything we deal with in this life has spiritual value one way or the other. Amen. He didn't approach it as a Republican or a Democrat or, or anything like that. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, folks, but everything on the news is, is just uh, emotional. Uh, you see interviews and people on the street, and, it, and it's just loud and emotional. And there's, this, uh, there's a couple of people that are going around, and they're from a conservative camp. And they're going around with a microphone, and they're asking a question. If you're against this or that, um, tell me what that means. They just get yelled at. And they said, just tell me, define what that means. I want to learn your stance. And they get yelled at. And they say, will you just sit down with me and let's have a conversation. Folks, people are not interested in the truth or discovering the truth or seeking the truth. We did find here that the, ch the church in Berea, those people, as they heard the gospel from Paul and Silas, they went and examined the scripture to see if it was the truth. They were interested in the truth. And folks, you and I have to be interested in seeking the truth and know that it only comes from God's holy word. Doesn't come from Capitol Hill or anywhere else, especially not the media. It comes from God's holy word. Amen. That's the only source of truth. Okay? Amen. You talk to some, you can talk to some people that are very charismatic, and they can be totally uh, opposite of what you believe. But if you hang around them long enough, 
and that charismatic personality and attitude and their loud voice, before long you'll start believing them because they're convincing. And you can walk over across the street to somebody else who believes just the opposite and it's very charismatic and you hang around them long enough and you hear their, their, their argument and it's persuasive and it's loud and it's emotional and before long you'll start believing what they say. It's not about emotion. It's not about who gets the most um, hours and, and coverage by the media. It's, it's what God's Word has to say. And as we're going to see in 1 and 2 Thessalonians, things happened. People heard the gospel and some believed. There was a lot of opposition. These people from Thessalonica followed Paul to Berea. Why? To cause problems. To stir up the crowd. To agitate and stir up. Again, this is not from the church. This is toward the church. Okay? And folks, there are always going to be opposition to you and me as we live out the life of a disciple, which is what we're commanded to do. There will always be opposition. And in this, this country and this day and age, there's going to be more and more and more opposition. Uh, my research paper, which I have to finish today, um, is, is on ethics, and I chose animal rights, and I made a comment about a Pomeranian last week, which I have to say, I thought it was funny, but y'all were not. <laughs> I was kidding. But one thing I have learned, see, my wife has Pomeranians, so, but uh, one thing I have learned, even, even animal rights, what does that have to do with Scripture? To, to lift up the rights of animals, the so-called rights of animals, you have to lower the rights of human beings. I have read so much this past week on animal rights, and I am telling you, it is a spiritual war. Amen. It's not about animals. It's spiritual warfare. Terms like personhood that came up in the ticket this past election and is going to come up again. Personhood. You think, well, that's people. No. An animal can be a person. Not a human being, but a person. By definition. By today's definition. You have to be very careful and diligent in what you hear people say and, and do some research and understand. It is spiritual warfare, folks. Spiritual warfare. Be careful what you gravitate toward. Be careful what you assume is this is what it means. Pay close attention. Um, in the scripture here, there was a lot of crowd mentality. And there's a lot of crowd mentality these days. You know that if you have a megaphone, you can talk people into just about anything. You can stir people up. And that's what they were doing in Thessalonica. That's what they went and did in Berea. And that's what's happening today. You can stir people up to believe anything. And folks, I, I heard that I shared with you about the church that was in California. I don't know if you saw some of that in media coverage or on YouTube or whatever. But they lumped all the churches together. All these churches are causing the spread of this virus. Churches are the evil thing. Churches will need to be shut down. All churches. The day's coming. I've been telling you this for years and years and years. The day is coming when we're going to live in a society like our brothers and sisters all over the world have been living in for years. Years. Oppression. Persecution to the church. We better be living close to God. Walking with Him. Trusting in Him. People with megaphones stir up the emotions of others with powerful, insightful words. And I don't mean insightful like uh, that's a new knowledgeable thing for me, but insight like a riot. You can stir people up and do all kinds of crazy things. Others try to interview the crowd members by asking questions about the facts. They're often yelled at, talked over, dismissed completely. Um, they don't want to hear the truth. Do you? Do I want to hear the truth? I mean the truth. God's Word truth. Do we really want to hear it? Most, listen to this, most people aren't looking for truth, just validation for what they already think and believe. Amen. Just validation for what they already think and believe. And I say they, sometimes the they is we. Amen. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth because we just want validation for what we already believe and, be and think. It's what we've learned. It's what we've heard. It's what our family believes. It's what we've been taught. Sometimes even in the church walls. Folks, we need to be seeking diligently the truth. 
the truth that only comes from God's holy word. And I can tell you, the longer this world stands, the further and further this world is going to get from the actual truth. Amen. You can't believe what you hear, what you see. You just can't. Just like I said, that snippet they played of the, the sermon that the pastor preached and said, it was, it's God's right for us to do this. And they, they lumped that with churches not social distancing and, and not wearing masks and so forth to say that the, the pastor was talking about that. He could have been talking about anything. But because they put it that way, that's the message that came across because they have a bias. They always have a bias. So are we looking for the truth? Are we looking for the truth? I want to tell you something about this in, in Acts 17. It said here that some of the Jews were persuaded in Thessalonica and they joined Paul and Silas along with a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and the Gentiles and a number of the leading women. These folks that I just read about, that, that you'll find that in verses 4, well, verse 4, all of it's there in verse 4, chapter 17, verse 4. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and a number of the leading women. These folks are why we have First and Second Thessalonians. Paul writes them letters of encouragement to this brand new small cell group that will be known as the church in Thessalonica. These right here. This is where it starts. Acts chapter 17, verse 4. From there, we're going to go to First and Second Thessalonians. And you'll find in First and Second Thessalonians, Paul talks a lot about the coming of the Lord. He talks a lot about the end of time. He talks a lot about preparing. He talks a lot about staying uh, steadfast in persecution and trials. He talks a lot about what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Folks, that's where we are. That's what we need to hear. Okay? I'm going to stop there for today. And I want you to understand that we're, Lord willing, we're moving to 1 Thessalonians next week, next Sunday. And we're going to see just what the people are encountering. And, and sometimes we, we are so, uh, we see scriptures and the people in the scripture as so isolated and set apart. And everything is just so sanitary. And, and we don't see the fact that these people are dying. These people are being tortured. These people are at, in the middle of struggling for their lives. Why? Because of their belief in Jesus. Because they call themselves the Christ followers. And I want you to understand when we get to 1 Thessalonians, Paul is writing to encourage people that are at war. Not because they've caused problems on their own. Not because they, they got out in the street and got in a fight with somebody, but because they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe his message, his life, who he is, and they're telling people about who he is. And it's costing them everything. And Paul's writing to encourage them, folks. And I want you to understand, opposition comes to those who walk with Jesus. Opposition will always come to those who walk with Jesus. Okay? Are there benefits of walking with Jesus? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do we have some really great days? Amen. Yes. Do we have a great retirement coming up? Eternal life? Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. But if you and I signed up to follow Jesus because we wanted everything to be great right here and right now, we missed the point. Amen. We signed up to follow Jesus because of who He is. Because we want to love Him back and serve Him and tell others about Him no matter what it costs. One day, we're on Facebook right now. People are listening on the phone, have no control over who watches Facebook and who will be watching YouTube later on. One day, we'll get shut down. Either cut off of that, or they'll chain the doors. One day. It may not happen in my lifetime or yours, but it's happened all over the world. Make up your mind today why you're sitting in an air-conditioned, comfortable room, and we're talking about Jesus openly. Make up your mind today whom you will serve when the day changes and times change. Okay? Opposition will always come to the church to those who hold fast to the teachings and the truth of God's holy word as disciples of Jesus. I want to close with this passage in 2 Timothy. 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Again, Paul is writing. This is the last, the last things that Paul wrote in his life. Is he's writing here to encourage Timothy. This is the latter, latter part of his life. He writes this. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. It's imperative. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. But you, you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Would you stand with me, please? You bow your heads. And this morning, if there's someone here this morning who doesn't know Christ, we just want to let you know God loves you. You are loved. You were created for the purpose of being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just ask Him to forgive you. Place your faith and trust in Him. Let Him be Lord of your life. Let Him be in charge of your life. Trust Him. He will turn your life around. He will give meaning to your life. It will be His life as He lives through you. Father, thank you for giving us the gospel this morning, for uh, helping us to, to come to understand there is always opposition. There will always be an agitating and stirring up of the crowd where the church is uh, present. Lord, I pray that wherever we are as believers in Christ, there the church is, help us to understand that. Father, I pray that we would stand for what Scripture says, for truth. We would be more interested in being a believer in Christ, a Christ follower, than of a political affiliation or a financial base. That Lord, I pray that, that we would be your child first and to be your mouthpiece. And Father, we've got to be very careful that our mouth doesn't outrun our feet as we walk in faith, not by sight. And as people see us living that life and you in us, then and only then can we speak. And they believe what we say. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your grace and your love. And Father, now as always, I ask you to bless these folks that are here today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.